Hello everyone. These days, a research paper from Team Hawaii or Team Hawaii is gaining very much attention. This research paper is related with Vision GNN, where the team behind this research paper is proposing a new way to process images for more improvements over the CNN or the GNN processing for the images. The team proposed a novel way to process images by using these patches, which could be 16 by 16 pixel patches, and using these patches to create the graph nodes. And then using GNN or the graph neural network space processing to build the neural network and then perform the various image recognition as well as the object detection tasks. Hello everyone, my name is Avkash and in this video we are going to go deeper into the Vision GNN research paper. We will learn how it is different from its predecessor Google Vision Transformer which is the origin of uh, proposing image as patches. Before we proceed further, I would share these two in-depth tutorial around graph processing and the graph neural networks. If you are interested to learn more in-depth information regarding the graph processing and the graph neural network in PyTorch, please do visit these tutorials. Both of these tutorials are going to be very beneficial to you. Here we can see the framework for the proposed VIG model, where an image will be split into n patches, and those patches are going to constitute the graph representation of the image. So the very first step for us to know how the graph representation of the image is created in this VIG transformer. The second step will be to understand the graph processing, which is a combination of two different steps. First is the graph processing and the second is the feature transformation. And that is what is going to create the graph neural network. And finally, the output for graph neural network will be the model, which can be used for image recognition and the object detection tasks. So let's look into the first step, the graph representation of the image. So initially you are going to get the images and images will have height and width and they can also have the three different channels RGB. So depending on what kind of image you have, those images will be sliced into n different patches. So you are going to have the n patches and each patch is going to be transformed into a feature vector. And here feature vector, we could say that the dimension will be D. Some of the images will have more feature than other. It is very much possible. However, the feature dimension across all those given patches will be considered as the D. So the Z here reference all those feature vector for every given patch. And using these features are going to be constitute your unordered set of nodes. So the nodes here, V is going to have all V to N depending on your N patches. And each node is going to represent one patch and the features vector for each node is going to be associated as X1. If the node is V1, then the feature vector for that node is going to be the X1. Now we have our graph nodes ready for us. It means the next step for us is to generate the nearest neighbor K for every node. So the every node like V1 to Vn is going to constitute the nearest neighbor and which is represented as Nvi here. So for every node you are going to get the nearest neighbor and for 
every time you are going to find a neighbor, you are going to generate an edge between the node and the neighbor. So that's how you are going to get a few, one or more edges will be added to your graph. So at this point, you have a graph which has all the nodes as V and the edges also. So the E, it means that finally you have your graph constructed as G, which is a collection of all the V, which are the nodes and the E, all the edges. The second step is kind of graph processing and I have given you a few steps after studying VIG research paper. So in the graph convolution network, you have nodes and you have neighbor nodes. So the information exchange happened between the nodes and neighbor nodes by aggregating their feature sets. And the graph convolution does apply something called the multi-head update operation because there are several nodes and there are several features and there could be diverse features among different nodes. By using the multi-headed update operation, the multiple representations can be updated simultaneously. And finally, you get the graph data, which is the product of repeated use of several graph convolutional layers. But there is an after effect. The performance degradation for visual recognition, it means the image may not be able to recognize perfectly and to improve and overcome the over smoothing problem, which caused the performance degradation and enhancing the feature transformation capacity a feed forward network is applied at the each node label. So this feed forward module is just a simple multi-layer perceptron with two fully connected layers. So the combination of graph convolution neural network and the FFN is what is being explained here. So this is what generate your graph neural network. So we could say the combination of graph processing module and the feed forward module is what defines a VIG block. And that is what the basic building unit of network construction. And here we could understand how the final constructed graph structure look like. Here the input image and as you see this is in the very first block and that this is after the 12 block. So what are the blocks? So we have already seen the VIG block. It means the graph processing and the combination of per node feed forward network generate one block. It means after one, two, three, four, five. So the after 12 block, the input image, which was at block number one, this has the graph, which looks like this after the 12 block. So there are two separate images. So let's look into deeper into the one image. So this is what the graph look like at very first graph processing and the feed forward network label. So here, as you see that very early first stage, all the similar looking structures are connected together. Here, the similar looking structures are connected together. It means for this given node, these are the nearest neighbor with similar feature set. That's what these two node constitute. However, after 12 iteration, we could see that this area can also able to find these images, this similar to that, and the same here, this area can able to find the distant features like this and other features. So this is how you could see that the iteration that keep training more and more and more. And finally, each node has ability to consist the more similar feature as they appear in the image. So we already know that in the commonly used vision transformer, there are two different architecture. One is isotropic architecture and another one is pyramid architecture. So the isotropic architecture, all uh, whenever we take the images, they do not really change. It means that whatever the image has been introduced, it does not change. Similar to the CNN where the mask applied with the convolutional really reduce the image size. So as we go more deeper into the layers, we could see that image is really being reducing its special size. So isotropic versus pyramid and the VIT, so vision transformer for 16 by 16 patches from Google, 
is what the, it used the isotropic. It means those images, they do not change. They stay same during the network. So VIG, Vision Network, was created for the isotropic architecture as well as the pyramid architecture. And the VIC has three different configurations, TI for tiny, S for small, B for big. So out of these three different network configuration, here is the performance against other similar networks in both isotropic architecture as well as the pyramid architecture. So the information I was sharing with you was taken from here. I studied this document. If you are interested to go deep and find the math, please review this article and learn by yourself. And if you're interested in getting your hands on these models and perform your own technical task, you can get it from here. So that's all I have for you in this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed the content in my video. If you have liked it, please do share it. Please subscribe my channel and also comment your feedback or any suggestions you have. I do appreciate your time and I'm looking forward to see you in my next video. Until then, please be good and do good. Thank you.